So the the last scene, and if you haven't seen the movie, then <laughs> I don't want to give it away. But the the last scene is uh, very close before Kelly uh, died. It, it was just a few days before, and and when we were told by her family that she was getting really close, you know, we called her and said, Kelly, we we really want to come and see you to say goodbye, and we weren't going to bring a camera. We said, you know, we don't have to film it. That's fine. And she said, and she was having such a difficult time, you know, texting and, and, and talking. She couldn't even talk on the phone. And she said, uh, if you're coming back, you're bringing your damn camera. <laughs> I really want you to, to film this. And so in that last interview, um, you know, Kelly was very positive. Not only was she positive, but also she was kind of bossy in a very good way. That's what she was driven. I mean, you look at how much she's accomplished just in the time of her advocacy that she was forced into. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, she was the, the first guest on the Jeff Probst show. And, but, but she always wanted to remain positive. She had stickers and notes in her bathroom with positive thoughts. She thought that her mind had to participate in the fight against her cancer. And she was, you know, right. But, um, and she very rarely cried in interviews. Um, but that last interview... She cried the whole time. I mean, she was in tears the whole time because she knew it was over. There was nothing else she could do. And she felt that she had lost that battle. And, you know, when you do an interview, and Mark does the, the interviewing, he's the one who asked the question, what do you tell someone who is dying because they know, I'm sorry, what do you tell somebody who is crying because they are dying? There's not much you can tell them. You can't tell them, you know, it's going to get better, time will heal. You, you don't have any of these canned answers to tell him. But what Mark said, he said to her, Kelly, we're going to show this to as many people as we can, and your story is going to save lives. And then she smiled. That was the only smile she gave us in that one last interview. And so the answer to your question is that it meant an incredible amount. The only thing she had left was that her story and her message could save lives. Kelly actually saw uh, a rough cut of the film before she passed away, and obviously didn't have the ending because. But she knew that she was part of this ending, and she loved it. You know, she she was very happy to be a part of this film and to see her place in it and know that she could make a difference. And really, you know, she she doesn't know. I guess the extent of the outcome of the film and what she can mm -hmm. do, but I think she she knew in a sense like she dreamt it you know with us like she saw the vision and she saw what we were trying to do and get it to as many people as possible and that's really the goal and that's hopefully uh, we can all help spread that message and get it out there and get it to as many people as possible that's what we're trying Frederick has really set up a, a great different opportunities to show the film to get it out there for people to, to show it in small groups uh, at home on your computer or at big big screenings we're really trying to get it out there and use uh, very creative uh, ways to to get people to see it because you know honestly it's tough like who it's tough to get somebody to watch a film about HPV and cervical cancer and it, it's just something people get a little uncomfortable with but reality is it's a human interest story and it's something that could affect us all and could affect your children and just to know this, to be educated, it's power. And I think Kelly knew this, and she, we feel like we owe it to her as well to get this out there. And not just Kelly, all the women in the film. That's right. Uh, there's th three, three ladies who are huge advocates, uh, who are survivors, survivors of cervical cancer, uh, Susie Carrillo, uh, Christine Bays, and Tamika Felder, and they're all every day their, their lives are all about being champions f for cervical cancer. And then also Kristen Forbes, who is 23 when she passed away from cervical cancer. Her family now, uh, Kirk and Brendan Forb Brenda Forbes, excuse me, are huge advocates years later after their daughter passed away and trying to get this message out. And they're really big about pushing the vaccine mm -hmm. and letting them know for their children that get your kids vaccinated because their 23-year-old daughter died of cervical cancer. So really everybody involved, we feel like we owe it to them as well as the rest of the world and the rest of other people going through this to get this out there and to make sure it doesn't have to happen. We want this to 
sort of be the polio of of years past where you can eliminate it. I mean, I know polio still exists in some areas, but for the most part, we can we can eliminate cervical cancer. It's going to take some time and it's going to take a lot of effort and hopefully we can play a, a small part in that. Mm -hmm. So so the future of eradicating cervical cancer is vaccination because that's how you eliminate for the next generation. And the Forbes family are very big on pushing or at least promoting and, and educating about vaccination because their daughter died you know, in her early 20s and she had a pap smear just months before she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. So the only thing that could have saved her was the vaccine and it's the same for Kelly. The only thing that could have saved her is the vaccine. So we're not saying that screening is not important, it's huge, but vaccination is the future of eradicating cervical cancer. And Frederick and I really had no, when we first came into this, we didn't have a stance necessarily on, no. on vaccination. We were not like, even at one point we were like, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, you know, we didn't really know, but the more we learned and the more we found out, like, Every expert we talked to was so pro-vaccine. Every everybody we talked to, it it just and then it became clear to us this is the only way to really make a huge global impact on on this problem is through vaccination. And now we now we understand. And we're not paid by Merck or anyone else, any other vaccine companies to say this. We just understand for That's ourselves right. that this is from a social health perspective. Vaccination is the it's only way we can we can do it. Yeah, I mean it, the, the history of vaccine is really a, a miracle vaccine. It's a vaccine against cancer, and and when like Mark was saying, when we entered this topic, when we researched it, we looked into the science, we looked into the allegations of how the vaccine was unsafe, and we realized it was all unfounded. And the experts who had really no interest in in supporting a vaccine that would be hurting people showed to us how safe it was. And so that's the outcome of the film, is that it ends up being very pro-vaccine, but it could have easily not been had we discovered something different. I, under I understand, I actually understand the people, the anti-vaxxers and people who are against vaccines. I get it, you know, parents, they're parents who love their kids and who are very, just want to make sure they protect their family as much as possible. But you know, if you really look at it, if that's the logic, you want to protect your family as much as possible, then you, you can protect your kids from a virus that causes a cancer and kills a lot of people and potentially five other cancers. So it's if you want to talk about protecting your kids, that to me seems to be the way to go. And it's really all about the numbers, isn't it? I mean, you're looking at a virus that impacts 80% of people, assuming most of these people will have a sexual relationship at some point in their lives, right? Out of those 80%, 90% will get rid of the virus on its own, but 10% won't, right? So these are the numbers you're looking at. 80% and then 10% of those will have HPV, will develop into something that needs to be taken care of and potentially cancer. Now let's look at vaccines. Okay, vaccine, talking about vaccines in general, it's one in a million will have a serious side effect. Okay, um, aspirin is 10 in 10,000 will have a serious side effect. But we don't think twice about taking aspirin. So it's really all about the numbers. Look at the numbers, educate yourself. Like Mark said, we get it. You're anti-vaccine, it's fine. But please, really, educate yourself objectively. And I guarantee you that you will come out of this saying, you know what, this is a worthwhile bet.